The Federal Reserve is gearing up for its highly anticipated Jackson Hole Conference this week. But rather than meeting at a gorgeous mountain resort, officials will be holding their talks online for a second year in a row due to concerns over a rise in COVID cases. Now, this year, the theme is built around addressing the uneven economy with all eyes on Chairman Powell amid a growing divide among the officials who say the Fed is on the right path and those who say action should have already been taken long ago. So joining me now to discuss are Michelle Snyder, partner and director of trading research and education for the Market Gauge Group, and Ted Oakley, managing partner at Oxbow Advisors. It's great to have you both on the show today. Michelle, I want to start with you. So for months now, we've heard Powell say that progress is being made, just not enough, and that inflation is rising, but not for long. Are we expecting to hear anything different from him this week? Well, I don't think so. If we look at the fact that it's now virtual as a metaphor for how the whole Federal Reserve is feeling, then we could say that they still have concerns about something no one really knows how it's going to play out, the Delta variant. And that's essentially what they're going to address. And they've already said that they're committed to following the data points, that they will accommodate if they have to. And so what more could they possibly say at this point with so many variables unknown? I think the title of the whole conference is interesting as an uneven economy because that actually is true. So whether or not they bring up inflation this time is anything more than transitory, I find unlikely. At some point that will come back to bite them, that I am certain of. But in terms of this one, there'll still be the same talk about taper down the road, maybe end of this year, maybe the middle of 2022. But a lot of it will depend not just on the variant, but also on the labor force, which has been another big concern of Powell's. Yeah, it really does seem like this is kind of a metaphor when all of a sudden they say that they're going to hold this meeting online once again. Now, Ted, speaking of the theme there, past themes for this summit have simply been implications for monetary policy or challenges for monetary policy. So what kind of a message is the Fed sending this year when they notably chose the theme macroeconomic policy in an uneven economy? Well, I think, I think what it does is it says, hey, we don't really know what's going to happen, so we'll give ourselves, <laughs> that's code for saying we don't know what's going to happen, so we'll, we'll give ourselves an out either way, Christy. I think that's where they're headed, and, and they don't know, and so uh, it's very much like the Fed. I mean, that's, that's basically what they do, you know, talk out of both sides. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's something we've been hearing for months now. And I mean, Michelle, speaking of this theme of uneven, that also applies to where Fed officials stand right now, with some becoming more vocal about wanting to pull back on asset purchases sooner rather than later. So from an investor standpoint, how do they see the difference and is it hurting their confidence in the Fed? Well, I was, when I saw that you were going to ask this question, I went back and really thought about different Fed chairmans we've had through the years, Bernanke, Yellen, and now, of course, Powell. And I think ultimately the market reacts to what they say more than what you have in terms of the division between the, uh, or I should say, among the different Fed members. So I would really focus on what Powell said. Case in point, last week, FOMC came out. Minutes were a little bit more hawkish. He said, no, 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 no. We're still very dovish considering we don't know what's going on. So that's kind of that. What's so interesting is the Fed themselves, they bought $120 uh, million, uh, started buying $120 million worth of bonds at the start of the pandemic. They stabilized the market. And I still think to this point, even though they stabilized the market, they triggered inflation. And the fact that they still think is transitory, it won't be. And I've seen other members kind of say, well, maybe it's not. But really, it's going to be up to Powell to finally decide that he has to make some action because guess what? Inflation isn't so transitory. And they're not there yet. So I would just follow Powell. And now, Ted, what's your response to those sort of uneven Fed officials who are admitting that they don't agree on the future of policy? Do you think that those disagreements are going to have any impact on where the Fed actually goes? You know, I don't, I don't think so. I, I'd have to say the last Fed president that I actually believed was Paul Volcker. Uh, from that point forward, you know, they've all said things and then done the opposite, mm -hmm. as well as Powell. So I don't, I don't, I don't really. I take most of that with a grain of salt because I know one thing for sure: if the market falls by 20%, they all pull in quickly and go the other way. So 
Uh, I really, I don't, I don't really read too much into it. They're always measured with their words, and they want to make sure that, uh, that that they've got it under control, which is couldn't be further from the truth, really, when you get right down to it. But mm -hmm. uh, that's the way I'd see it from here. Yeah, especially when they don't know exactly what's going to happen. Now, Ted, when it comes to the market, we have seen it react not just to what the Fed policies are, but also to what Chairman Powell has to say about the economy. How do investors see this summit? And is this a case where the Fed is actually between a rock and a hard place no matter what they do? Well, I think investors will, they always try to find a word or a sentence. And really, I think... Uh, Powell is more measured with his words than that, so you're not going to find anything from that. But I do think they are somewhat between a rock and a hard place because, uh, just as Michelle mentioned, you know, if you inflate from here, they've got a problem and that they have to come in and, and really uh, move the rates a bit. That's a problem for the stock market. If you go the other way and all of a sudden things get really weak and the market looks up and says, well, hey, the, the money's not working. Then you have another problem. So I think investors think about it like that. Now, whether it comes out to play, but that's true. That's a good point. Uh, rock on a hard place is where they are. Yeah, it certainly seems that way. Now, Michelle, when it comes to Chairman Powell, I mean, he has not only his legacy, but the upcoming end of his term to look at. Do you think that that's playing a role in his decision making right now? one would hope not that he really actually is looking at the data points and he's actually looking at what's happening here in terms of the pockets of strength versus the real pockets of weakness that we have in the economy but in one thing i just want to add I, you know you can listen to fed speak and your mind can explode so i kind of <laughs> try to focus on what the bond market is doing and particularly the junk bond market and also the high corporate grade bond market because that's really what started to stabilize and really led in terms of the whole recovery when we started to uh, after we swooned in the pandemic back in March 2020 and right now they're both saying caution but things are okay there's still a risk on when I see that change I won't care what anybody says to me that will be the indication that we're going from risk on to a real serious risk off Excellent points to consider here. Michelle Snyder of the Market Gauge Group and Ted Oakley of Oxbow Advisors, thank you both for your time. Thank you, Rachel.